it's two types of people glass half empty or glass half full which one are you you know what i'm saying so i feel like right now is the time to really amplify the conversation around what optimism is, is all about right the perfection is a disguise for insecurity i focus more on the marathon than trying to have it all perfect i'm putting this out because i'm passionate about putting this out hey what's going on y'all so I really wanted to hop on this one because I felt inspired, especially after uh, listening to a little bit of Bob Proctor earlier. Um, man, he he really made it stand out, man, that it's just it's, it's good in every scenario that could possibly happen in life. Right. Because that's just the natural yin and yang of existence. Right. There's there's just two sides to every coin. And so since we live in a universe that's full of polarity, um, I just want to talk about that. I don't care about the fact that I don't care how much just like adversity is going on around us um we all know what's happening in today's economy so um that's obviously the biggest elephant in the room but he made it clear man that it's good in every scenario you just it's just about the lens that you view it through right so um one of the biggest examples that he uses and i know a lot of people don't really don't really respect this or understand this but one of the biggest examples that he uses is the fact that Back in the 1930s when we had the Great Depression happen, right? That was uh, that time in the 1930s when the Great Depression was taking place. What's going on, Chuck? Um, when the Great Depression was taking place, I mean, it's historically noted that a lot of people lost a lot of money, right? Um, but we don't, like I said, it's about the lens that you look at it through. Everything that's happening, there's good in every scenario, right? So in the 1930s when the Great Depression was happening, at the exact same time where people was losing money, it was a lot of people making money. That's what we forget. Like I said, it's good in every scenario. Chuck, you even pointed it out earlier. Um, so at the same time in the 30s where the depression was happening, as companies were going out of business, there were new entrepreneurs emerging, bringing new businesses into existence because opportunity was being created. So that's just what I mean when I say there's good in everything. That's why the topic of, of what I wanted to talk about today is around optimism. Like, I don't care what's happening around us, y'all. Like, if you're not looking at it through an optimistic lens, then you're already setting yourself up for failure. You know, they say, like, it's two types of people, glass half empty or glass half full. Which one are you? You know what I'm saying? So um, that's why that's why that's I, I feel like right now is the time to really amplify the conversation around what optimism is, is all about. Right. So I just think it's so funny how these millionaires and these billionaires can sit up and tell you these these concepts about how to be successful. And it just goes over so many people's heads. Right. Or it, it could just it might just go under their feet. But to hear a billionaire say that all you have to do is think about what you want in order to, to achieve what it is that you want out of life. That sounds so simple, that that concept right there. Right. But we live in a thought universe. That's that's what it is at the end of the day. So what happens is when you think when you think certain thoughts like it's it's like an energy charge, certain energy is just charging within you. Right. And I almost look at it like a spirit bomb. Anybody who know what Dragon Ball Z is, it's like, you know, you 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 pull in all the power and the energy from the universe. That's just what's happening. So. Um, when you're trying to manifest something for yourself or bring something into existence, something that you desire or something that you want for your own life or a, the certain life that you that you see yourself living one day, envisioning that every time you close your eyes and think about that, you charging that you bring in more energy to that. And so I think just that's that's what the conversation need to be about more. We need more optimism because right now everybody got such a grim outlook on what's happening. And I get it like. It's easy. It's easy to be like, all right, well, shit, they said they said we're in a recession. So it's a recession. You know, people look at headlines and they just let that be the narrative. Like, all right, uh, you know, doom and gloom is coming. Why do why do doom and gloom got to be coming? Just because that's what the headlines say. So at the end of the day, every man is responsible for his own destiny. You know what I mean? But it's, it's all a mental game. It's all about what's going on up here, y'all. So. But, man, I just wanted to hop on and engage with everybody, man. What's going on out there? What's going on, Chuck, man? I appreciate you putting in the work, my brother. Um, man, I, I, I still remember the first time we linked up, man. You had a long way to go. Um, you know, it was, uh, you know, the page was kind of empty, man. But look at you now. You know what I'm saying? You, you're doing your thing, man. You impacting lives. And you know what you're doing at the end of the day is, 
is ultimately gonna pay off, bro. There's there's no way around it, my dude. It's, it's gonna pay off the work that you're putting in. And look, hey, if it don't, if a piano fall on your head tomorrow, where your kids got that content, man, where they could go back and see what you was about, man, and, and learn what you was teaching. So, um, you know, we definitely appreciate that, man. But what's going on out there, man? Car Eclipse. <laughs> what's the deal? Shoot. Yeah, man, I'm. I, I know it's. Uh, I know it's real crazy out there, man. But uh, yeah, man, I know. I know everything. I know everything happens for a reason. So, uh, but that's why. That's why I'm gonna keep going hard, man. That's why I do what I do for the people. But um, right now, I just want to get more in the habit of engaging more. So, you know, that's why I'm, I'm trying out live real quick. You know, and just trying to get into the habit of just just talking to the people more, hearing what the, what the, what kind of thoughts they have. You know. Because, you know, that's what it's about at the end of the day, you know. Um, I got a cousin right now, man. This dude's so caught up in, in everything that's going on in his own life. It's like, bro, do you know there's billions of people outside of you with, with things that's happening in their lives? So, you know, a lot of times we just get caught up in what's happening in our own worlds. But, um, you know, masterminds, they're, they're able to think on a grand level. When they, they think... They think in universal terms. They're not just, you know, they're not just thinking locally. They think globally, you know what I mean? Because it's a whole world out there. So um, I think the more we highlight what other people got going on or, you know, highlighting the lives of others, calling them out, um, you know, just allowing other people to just shine for a minute. You know, even like what my bro do with Detroit on Fire, you know, that platform, uh, bro, what you're doing is powerful because you, you, you it's unselfish because you highlighting the lives of other people, bro. And that's why that's why I love doing what I do with podcasts. You know what I'm saying? Because it's it's an unselfish thing. You're giving other people a chance to 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 bring their story to life. You know, make them feel special for 15, 20 minutes. You know what I mean? So, um, and I've gotten some some amazing reactions out of people. Um, and people like introverts, introverts who come talk. You know, who come on the show. You know, and they they speak. You know, from a, a perspective I've never heard them speak from before, but. Everybody understand that spotlight or that chance is 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 theirs to take advantage of. Say what you need to say. What's going on, Tony Price Music? What's going on, my baby? <laughs> yeah, man. What's the deal, Trill? I want to answer some questions, man. What kind of what kind of what kind of questions y'all got, bro? Business, life, economics. What's up? Talk to me, man. You know, there's so much shit going on out there right now is the time to this is the time to be more more virtual. You know what I'm saying? Where people can 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 experience you more more digitally. You know what I mean? Because that's just where it's headed. You know, I read that today that six point six million jobs got cut out and it's like, damn, you know what I mean? Like that's that's where we at right now. So that's that's historic. That's record breaking. I'm even hearing divorce rates are going up fucking domestic violence rates and shit you know what i'm saying because people got to stay at home and deal with their wives <laughs> so it's a different reality that we live in it you know what i mean so but it's about ad adapting because that's what makes us that's what makes us humans at the end of the day the fact that we can adapt to anything that's happening around us bro it could be a fucking man it could be fucking dinosaurs roaming the planet and shit but but we'll figure it out at the end of the day but it's, it's like I said, optimism is just based off what you believe at the end of the day. You know, it's about the lens that you view whatever is happening around you through. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, it's twofold. It always go back to glass half empty, glass half full. What, what type of person are you? How, how do you view it all? You know, because that's that's ultimately going to dictate just the outcome of everything. You know what I mean? And so when I look at the people that I grew up with. And I just kind of see the direction that they already like headed in their lives, you know, whether they end up, you know, somewhere dead or, or locked up, you know, the, only, the two traditional doors that, that, you know, average people go through. Um, it's no surprise to me because you could just see it. You could see it in, in the way that they view the world. When certain shit happen, they have a negative view on it. Right. To them, it's, 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 the, it's the end of the fucking world. Nobody cares. You got fired from your job, bro. I get it. Shit is hard, bro. It'll be all right, though. You will live. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, hey, maybe the universe is trying to move you. Like, I got fired from a job. I didn't know it was the best thing that could happen to me at the time it was happening. But it ended up being completely necessary to, my, to like, the next steps in my journey. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. Chuck said, what potential do you see 
and all of this for yourself. Um, right now, bro, same thing I've been uh, preaching to everybody. Uh, like, this is the cheapest I've ever in my life seen stocks, bro. Um, and everybody's not an investor, so I get that. Most people won't be able to take advantage of that. But me understanding that the two most traditional ways to be wealthy is through stocks and real estate. Um, that's what I've been looking at, bro. So I've been paying close attention to the Robinhood app, just kind of seeing like the prices of these different companies like Ford. Ford is four dollars and forty cents right now. They're on the brink of just completely going under. But Warren Buffett, one of the most successful stock market investors to ever do this shit. He said, all you got to do is, is ask yourself personally, do you believe in this company? If the answer is yes, then you putting your money in the right place. You know what I mean? So I believe in Ford no matter, you know what I'm saying, if they stocks worth a penny, you know what I'm saying? I believe in the principle that they stand on. They workers respect them. They workers, you know, love what they do, you know. So um, that's a good place to put my money right now. So that's what I've been taking advantage of. Also, I did mention that um, uh, with us being at home, people are just going to just view more content. So this is the time to be obviously seen more, you know what I'm saying? So even yourself, you know, putting out content, bro, more people are going to see what you got going on, you know. And um, like I don't I don't obviously know where the bottom is in all of this. We don't really know, um, you know, like like where like where the absolute worst is. But we just kind of taking this thing day by day. Um, but like just kind of look for the opportunities as they unfold. Like we probably haven't even seen the biggest opportunities present themselves just yet, bro. But. I truly believe, you know, it's out there. Like, it's just about the lens that you view it through. So, um, you know, like, uh, I remember when I wanted to do life coaching in 2016, uh, trying to be a 21-year-old life coach. It was funny. Um, the funny thing about it was, bro, it's like, you know, you got, they like, look, you got a lot more life to live before you try to be a coach. And the research that I did, it said that industries like life coaching typically do a lot better during economic recessions or depressions because people's you know consumers demands change people demand more more things that motivate them they want hope you know they're looking they're looking to try to you know get to that next step in any way they can get that or any advice or mentors they can get that from this is when you know that industry boom so um you know I often talk about uh you know not sacrificing uh, who you are in order to get more clout so like the topics that we talk about whether it be positivity business saving money um not working overtime at your job those type of topics they might be boring you know at, at face value to a lot of people but look what's happened in our economy bro all of a sudden these topics that we talk about are starting to become more and more relevant everything gary v was saying about shit ex like exploding people over leveraging over expanding spent money here and there that shit is all coming into fruition now he he did say it was uh, a lot worse than he was predicting but shit it's here bro it's here and so um man i'm of the mindset bro i don't even care if you got a billion dollars to your name like don't ever think it's enough don't ever think no scenario can't come along in life and change what the fuck you got going on you know what i'm saying so even if you got a billion dollars you still ain't shit <laughs> if you ain't got a brand you know what I'm saying? Because if your money gone, it's gone. Like, I was wondering last year in August when I kept seeing all of these CEOs stepping down from these companies. It was just, man, it was weird. I'm like, what the fuck? It was day after day on Twitter. Oh, this CEO stepped down. That CEO stepped down. Now I'm hearing about several CEOs that removed stocks out of their own companies at, at the end of last year. So it makes me wonder, like, well, damn, did they know? Did they understand that the bubble had got as big as it could get? So um, you never know what opportunities they paying attention to. So, you know, what I'm saying under just understanding how they move. And like you said, bro, distractions are limited now. So people looking for anything, anything to, 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 to put in front of them, bro. Shit, I, for a damn for a minute, I found myself doing that, just scrolling through YouTube and shit like, man, man, where's the content? You know what I'm saying? So, man, it's, it's real out here, bro. Let's see. What up, Blake? What's the deal, my baby? <laughs> hey facts bro you know what i'm saying like all everything like like branding is is the ace of spades out of everything that you could be doing in life and so to put fucking building your credit or getting a promotion at your job to put any of that on the pedestal over over building a brand is a huge mistake 
like everything follows brand like a couple years ago when I first learned how to pitch, like I read this book called Pitch Anything. When I first learned how to pitch, I was going to investors trying to get capital out of them. And it's like, who the fuck are you? That's the question they would ask me. Well, who the fuck are you? Why, am I, why would I give you money to work with? I don't know you. So me learning and understanding like, well, damn, once I brand myself, then they'll know who I am. It'll be easier for them to, to relinquish capital to me. You get what I'm saying? What's the deal, real? Um, also, uh, last year, you know, when I learned about systematizing, I understand that a lot of business owners didn't know the systematizing aspect of business. Um, you know, people would just go into business, try to sell a product, and they eventually get overwhelmed by everything that's happening around them. So I try to pitch that to businesses, and I still realize, like, wait a minute. In order to build my own system, you got to have money. Money is like the fuel to a system as an entrepreneur. If you want people putting in work for you, videographers, photographers, marketers, accountants, that system happening around you is going to require you to have some capital. Unless you have a brand that's strong enough to get somebody to believe in you anyway where the system just finds its way around you. And I'm going to give you an example of what I mean. Eric Thomas, he realized that he was good at, at speaking. So he decided to put out free videos on YouTube just doing what he do, him and his cameraman. Let me just do what I do and me put out these free videos. Enough people seen those videos and enough people got his attention or he got enough people's attention for brands to start reaching out to him and say, hey, maybe we can invest 50000 in you to come here and speak. With that 50000 now I'm able to put money here or put money there to, to get that system going around me. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say branding should be on the pedestal for everybody. Just putting out what you do, whoever you are, whether you play video games, whether you draw shit. Um, whether you like fucking making music or beats out of your farts, like whatever type of weird shit you into, that could, you know what I'm saying? That could be your unlock. So <laughs> um, if I could give advice to my younger self, um, damn, that's a good question. If I can give advice to my younger self, um, I probably would drop out of school um, early and I would just talk to my parents. I would just talk to them the best I could to get them to understand that, listen, school ain't for me. It's not the wave. It's not what I want to do. I know I know exactly what I want to do. So I would have started building a brand, just just putting out who I am to the world. Uh, you know, no matter how wacky the camera was, I would have just started the process of, of putting my voice or putting my opinions or putting my message out here. So that's that's a good question. I appreciate that, baby girl. Um, but yeah, branding. Branding, man, that's that's all it's about at the end of the day. So like I said, I wanted to go live um, just to kind of switch it up a little bit, um, engage, answer some questions. Um, my camera really, uh, it only record up to like 30 minutes at a time. So I figured I'd just hang out here for a few more minutes. But yeah, man, like I said, everything I have been seeing out there is, is just kind of like, wow. Like the fact that the fact that all those people are out of jobs now. So it's just about to be a lot. A lot of shit that's going to trickle down into the economy. You know, they asked Warren Buffett. Um, they asked him a, a, a crazy question about the city of Detroit. They was like, what do you think went wrong in that city to make just everything fuck up? This was like 2015, 2016, where we was just like bankrupt, whatever the hell. He asked them, they asked him, like, what do you think is the was the problem with the city of Detroit, Warren Buffett? Tell us, Mr. Billionaire. And he gave an easy response. His response was the finances got out of hand. <laughs> how the fuck do you trickle my mama crib getting broken into or my cousin getting shot or my, my my daddy getting locked up how do you how do you how does that all trickle down from one simple answer of it being finances finance determines all it dictates all once the finances fuck up everything fucks up so you know my brother said you know he don't see how our our economy is gonna last if people can't pay their landlords if people can't pay their landlords, how they landlords going to pay their landlords? And then how they landlords, landlords going to pay their landlords? So you see how everybody owes somebody something. So money makes money is the thing that makes the world go around. So when the finances get out of hand, everything get out of hand. This is why they, they're talking about higher, you know, uh, divorce rates or domestic violence cases being reported. That's that's why we're seeing these type of reactions. And so um, right now is not the time to, well, for me, like I, I got to. I got what they would call a luxury vehicle, but I don't I don't see it as that no more. It's a Mustang, but it's bright blue. Right now is not the time to have a nice car because people are looking at what you got and they want it. And they're 
they desperate. They're, you know, desperate times cost for desperate measures. So, hey, man, people coming after shit. So get ready to hear about more violence and just more crazy shit, you know. But that, that's the reality of the situation that we're in. So, um, like I said, I just want to come on here and give it a little bit of value. Um, I appreciate y'all for tuning in with me for a few minutes. All, all three of y'all, or two of y'all left now. <laughs> Um, answering y'all questions. Oh yeah, you asked something very, uh, very important about suicide. Um, that's a that's a really huge topic, man. Um, you know, a lot of us are vulnerable to ourselves. We are our own biggest enemies. Um, we're 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 victims of our own thoughts. And like, I realize some people will have a war zone going on up here. Um, unfortunately, you know, somebody I'm very close with in my family is going through a, a tough time right now. So. Um, just all I can do is just be the best possible example for that individual, you know. Um, I'm not interested in people trying to tell me how to live my life. I'm open to all suggestions. So I don't do that to other people. I just, you know, do what I can to be that example. So, um, but that's what I'm going to keep doing, you know, and um, keep giving y'all content in the midst of that. So, like I said, I appreciate y'all for tuning in.